This is Coop and Cassius for IFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast. We're at the Box Park here in Wembley for Sky and Boxers show this Saturday night, headlined by Richard Riakpo. Uh, I'm joined by Dean White. How are you, first of all, mate? All good, my bro. How are you doing? Try not to move everywhere. You're a swayer, aren't you? Sorry, I don't know. I can't always, always swaying. <laughs> uh, talk about you had a, a recent show not that long ago. Uh, how was that? Really good, you know. Really good show. Uh, busy. Um, great fights. Great show. Great entertainment. So I'm quite happy. We've got another show coming up. Um, a joint uh, juncture show with someone, Victor Smith, on June the 25th. Uh, We've got a few boys out on there. So yeah, just rocking and rolling. And then hopefully July we might have something. So we're active, man. We're active. For yourself to put on these kind of shows uh, in the current climate of boxing, you can give people an insight to how difficult or not difficult that is currently to do that, to be able to put on these kind of shows. Yeah, it's very, very difficult, man. It's hard. There's a lot of intricate stuff. There's a lot of, um, you know, niggles that you've got to get done. You need a good team as well, man. You know what I mean? It's not as easy. I'm, I'm sure uh, most of the other promoters are testament that it's not as easy. Um, we had a lot of issues with getting fights sanctioned. There was a lot of fights being turned down. There was a lot of stress at the time, but you know, everything happens for a reason, I guess. Um, but you know, we managed to get, I think, about 11 fighters on, which is still a, a very strong card. I think we ended up bloody going to after midnight, which was a really long night. But um, that's learning. I understand a little bit more now about certain stuff. I made a little error, not a major error, but you know, in the numbers. But you know, that was only our third show. But I mean, three back-to-back -back sellout shows and um, you know we're, we're very fortunate man I'm very fortunate and blessed that all the hard work is paying off um, and um, but it's something I love to do you know what I mean it's not for the faint-hearted you know what I mean so yeah good matchmaker as well so big him up I mean look I don't know the situation regarding my, my next question but if your shows at this stage like you said three shows in and not like at least breaking even what what's on the, the incentive and motive to, to push on and, and do another one? I think we do very good. I don't know. I don't really disclose any information. Um, but yeah, I think we do we do very good, man. You know what I mean? And um, I'm happy with how things are. So we're continuing to proceed and grow and we've got to um, continue to mould and make the right steps. Because if it, if it doesn't, you know, break even or make you anything, then you've got to question, you know what I mean? But like I said, in the long term, we're trying to build grassroots. We're trying to build some of the boxes we have in our stable, and um, you know, bring them on the road in the journey. So we might, you know, we might lose a little bit here and there. But at the minute, we're we're doing good, man. I can't complain. Um, we're building the guys. I've got one of the kids with me here today as well, um, and we're going to continue. We're signing a few boys now. We're looking at new locations. I think we're going to be. Um, I was with the board on Tuesday, looking at a new venue in Kent, in uh, Kentway. So. God willing, that goes well. We'll have a new venue. It's going to be really nice, and we'll be doing um, we'll be doing some bits down there because I've got a few boys from that like, um, Dover, Maidstone, um, and we're, we're surrounding. So, and I think South East London, there's a few boys from there. It's only around 35 minutes, 40 minutes from there. So I mean, we're working, man. We're planning, and and and, uh, and that's the only thing we can do. You know what I mean, if you don't have a plan, a man without a plan is. <laughs> Big, in big problems. <laughs> uh, you touched on it there, but your next show will be on. Yeah, so we've got a joint show on June the 25th. We've got the boy Spencer Oatman over here is on that, and then we've got Ify Porter that's going to be on that. We had someone else, but they've just they've got pulled out. You know what I mean? So, but we're just working at the minute, and um, we'll be down there. We'll, you know, anyone who wants to support any of these boys, just DM the boys, and you know what I mean, get some tickets. It's a couple of weeks away. That's going to be in Perthley in the Circus Tavern. Um, and, then, and the next one after that, hopefully, if everything works out, we might do sometime, with, maybe if I'm lucky, end of July. If not, we might be later, maybe September, end of the year. Um, September, I'm not sure. Because time is moving very, very fast. And you know, like I'm looking at the dates, we're actually in June already, so I don't know. You mentioned the Circus Tavern, they used to go Circus Tavern back in the day. You know about the history of Circus Tavern? Not really, tell me about it. I used to go in a little bit, white collar stuff. I bet you did, I? It's always over <laughs> Yeah, let's not, yeah, anyway, anyway, anyway. This is back in the day anyway, when we were younger, when we were younger. Okay, Circus Tavern, you know, mad, yeah, 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 shit. I didn't even remember that, I, mean, I don't know. 
Ball, ball, anyway, okay, uh, we'll bring on your boy Ed Spencer in a minute, but you know, obviously, every time obviously we speak to you, because um, we do ask you like, the custom question, uh, or the standard question, if you like, uh, about your brother Dillian. Uh, how is he at the moment? I did actually speak to myself a couple of days ago, but um, yeah, how's his mindset at the moment? Uh, just, if you spoke to him, you know he's in a, he's a bit more in a vibrant mood, he's, he's happy, um, he's good, he's training, he's feeling better, his mindset is, you know, sometimes you go for a loss it can have demons it can affect you and it did for a little bit it can affect the whole team you know what I mean so um, but yeah he's, he's good now man he's, he's in a good place um, and I'm happy that you know he took the time to kind of you know find yourself because you need to find yourself because you'll have demons you'll have questions after being you know lost stoppage lost so you, you know you start to doubt yourself maybe a little bit and figure out what mistakes did I make what could I do better but I think always a timeout is always good and is key. And he's had a bit of time out and, and I think that desire and purpose is still there, that hunger to continue getting to world level and fighting and trying to get a world title um, is still there. The dream is still there. You know what I mean? Um, look, he's only had three losses. Um, the, the, this is arguably the best kid in our generation, Tyson Fury. We've got to give credit to him. Hell of a fighter. And then the two other losses are two gold medalist Olympians. You know what I mean? So Dylan didn't have much of a pedigree and obviously he's continuing to learn on the job. Um, and, and he's done really well to get to this. You know, we didn't dreams of these dizzy heights to be here competing and doing this thing. I'm sure even from you, but way back in the day, you know, like doing this thing, you wouldn't have thought boxing would be where it was. I didn't even envision. We just was cutting through, living as young people, cutting through, you know, saying things, but you didn't envision boxing in, in the world and in the UK especially would get to these dizzy heights because America is the, 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 the bearer of the flag of boxing. All the top guys is in America. If you really wanted to do it, you had to be in America. Now we have a lot of the best champions and a lot of world champions here. So, you know, it's still the place to be though. We can't we can't write off America, you know what I mean? But it's still the, the place to be. But look, there's big fights for Dillian. There's Wilder fight, there's Andy Ruiz. There's so many fights at that kind of level. Big fights, he wants big fights, big money fights and um, you know what I mean that's where he's at well, look, I mean I remember I don't know how many years ago maybe 19 years ago I was at Dillian's second pro fight which was at the the Coronet in Elephant and Castle. I'm pretty certain you were there too at the time. And when you look at kind of that, there was probably, I don't know, maybe about four or 500 people there to what he's just fought in front of uh, against Tyson Fury. It's, a, it's an incredible journey. Incredible journey. And it's, it's one you, you know, he'll cherish. And, you know, you, you have to take that with you and say, look, I was part of that, you know, we're the wrong side of history for losing, but I was still part of such a magnificent event that, that brought out nearly 100,000 people in the UK. Absolutely mind-blowing, absolutely mind-blowing. Dean, what can you tell us about his recent meeting with Anthony Joshua? We saw them pictures come out, it looked very civil. And he, you know, I, didn't, I didn't even ask him about it, I didn't even ask him about it. You see me, I just mind my business, you know, if it ain't nothing to do with me, I just... You know, we don't really ask no bad up. Sure, I'm working and doing what I'm doing. I saw it online and then, <laughs> you know, he's a madman, he just chats madness. I, 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 I don't know if he even mentioned it or whatever, but I didn't ask about it because I was doing something. I think I was at the Taylor and Serrano. Then I came back and then I had to, I had to rush back to sort out my show. My show was like 10 days later. So I don't even think I asked him, but I think it was nice that they kind of met, they've spoken and they've, you know, had a, what's the word? Uh, like a, a friendly, but like or an amicable meeting, and said, you know, as as colleagues in the same sport, maybe we could run it back again. There doesn't need to be too much animosity. We can just be uh, acquaintances until that day again. You know what I mean? There doesn't need to be no um, animosity, and that's good. I think that was really nice to see. But I didn't really go in and ask him anything, boy. One thing I do know is okay, well, I mean, look, listen, all boxing fans, we'd like to see that again at some point before both guys obviously retire. Um, do you want to bring in your guy, uh, Spencer? So this is uh, Spencer. Spencer Oakman, I'll let, him, I'll let you introduce yourself today. Yeah, Spencer Oakman, I'm from um, Little Town, Dover in Kent. Uh, one and I as a pro now. Um, back out on June the 25th. I've, my debut was on Dean's last show. Um, yeah, signed with Black Box and Dean and yeah, just working my way through the pro ranks now. What's the plan for the rest of the year? Obviously, we're in June now, halfway through the year. Um, bang on, so before the end of the year, just getting more fights, more rounds, more experience in the pro game? Yeah, pretty much. Like, I, I, I haven't had a big amateur background, so it's, I'm learning on the job. 
really. Ben so I'm going around gym sparring and then it was quite a quick turnaround for this one. Um, I had about four, four or five weeks notice for it, but I was already fit. I'd already done a big camp for my debut, so that was fine. I'll probably have a little rest after this one, then come straight back out, maybe August, September time. And yeah, just get as many fights in as I can, really. Like I said, I'm learning on the job, so um, yeah, all the experience. I'm eager to learn from each fight and we'll see where it takes me. Okay, well, June 25th, we'll look forward to that and uh, we'll have another catch up before this. Get him out, man. We're going to have him active. So, look, we've got another three or four shows by the end of the year. Um, so we'll get him as active as possible and like we're looking for him to do good stuff man you know what I mean I'm confident that he will learn he's a young man that's learning on the job and that will learn he's going around sparring uh, Jermaine Brown the English champ who's fighting on Saturday night he's fighting uh, uh, what's it Ellis Zorro as well who won Ultimate Boxer he's sparring top quality amateurs and holding his own and doing doing just fine you know what I mean so this is good and that's the only way he's going to learn by sparring he's sparring he's your main sparring partner is what's that guy's name you know that guy Carol the team that signed with um, Frank Warren and that so he's got you know top quality sparring which that's a good way to learn because if, if you ain't had an extensive amateur pedigree so you know watch out for this kid man one day we'll try and you know he'll be up here doing his thing and we'll be looking for titles and stuff ourselves you know what I mean Guys, thank you very much for your time and uh, we'll catch up with you ahead of uh, June 25th. So best of luck with that show and uh, yeah, we'll chat soon. Thanks very much. Cheers, mate. Thank you. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Act. Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.